Hey everybody, welcome to Uncanny Derek Comics. In this video, we're going to be talking about what got me into collecting X-Men comics. And I'll give you a hint. It starts with three words. Previously on X-Men. And as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe below. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to give them. So... The X-Men animated series, that is what got me into X-Men. It is the <laughs> pinnacle of awesomeness in the 90s. Fox Kids had that show on and it just, boom, changed my life. And the funny thing is that I didn't know it was X-Men when I first watched it. I remember coming across it and I, I can't recall the episode exactly, but I thought that the characters' names were Sugar and uh, Cajun. And I didn't realize that those were the nicknames of these pre-established characters. It was really funny. Uh, to me, anyway. Uh, so I went out and bought a comic book uh, right off the bat. Because I recognized one of the characters. And that ended up being X-Men number 36 here. Uh, this is the first comic book I ever owned. Uh, this is the book itself. It is beat the crap. It is yellowed pages. It, it was left outside. It, the thing is warped beyond all belief. Uh, in the back there, you have my name written in pencil. It is just a complete train wreck of a book. Um, but I love it so much. And the reason why I grabbed it is because I recognize Sabretooth on the cover. I recognize him from the cartoon show. I'm like, this is X-Men. Let's go. And I got in there, and I didn't recognize anybody. Because <laughs> inside this is the first appearance of Cinch, who's on the cover there, um, who's from Generation X and was not in the TV series at all. Uh, Jubilee's in the book, although briefly, and then we also have Emma Frost in the book too, and Banshee, and Banshee was a main character in this run of X-Men, this is all bleeding in the Generation X, but I didn't know any of the characters in this book. Uh, however, it was this very last page here, by Andy Hubert, Sabretooth has escaped. And once I saw that at the end, I was hooked. I was like, wow, if Sabretooth got out, um, then who knows what's going to happen. I didn't buy the next book. I had no idea what was going on, um, but I kept watching the cartoon show. Uh, I ended up buying a better copy of X-Men number 36 now. This is an actual like mint condition copy of it here uh, because I needed to uh, have my reader and <laughs> my original one and the uh, high grade one here. Um, but uh, yeah, the X-Men cartoon is really what kickstarted everything and especially uh, my favorite villain, Apocalypse. The world won't stomach your evil forever. Evil? I am not malevolent. I simply am. Was it Apocalypse, though? Or was it Mr. Sinister and the Nasty Boys? Keep your sticky fingers to yourself, you walking tar pit. Oh, you wouldn't say that again. You mean better? Oh. Hey, gorgeous! <laughs> the noblest answer unto such is kindly silence when they brawl. Alfred Lloyd Tennyson. <laughs> so after I grabbed that X-Men 36, um, I was a child and then watched the animated series. And then in high school, I actually started grabbing the books again. And I started with X-Men 394. Um, Uncanny X-Men 394, which is actually Joe Casey's first story of his run. And uh, I went from 394 all the way to X-Men 401, I believe. And that was uh, the Poptopia run that uh, he had. Um, and that was actually a very Chamber-focused story. And Chamber, much like Cinch, was a Generation X character. And uh, so it wasn't really that X-Men heavy. It wasn't really involved in the characters that I knew from the show. Um, now, the Poptopia did also have Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Angel in it, um, but it wasn't, it, it showed me a bigger world than what I knew actually existed. And from there, uh, I actually went back and grabbed some older books. So after Casey's run, I grabbed X Men 114, which is uh, this guy here, The Day the X Men Died. And then actually, I grabbed X Men 15 next, which is this guy here, um, which is from the 1960s. And so, my collection was starting to go and backtrack and grab the older books. Uh, so I never really got appreciation of the full Claremont run because I obviously had to collect all those books. Um, but I started going more forward and with 
the planning on getting backwards to Claremont's books and reading the story in full rather than by piecemeal. It was in the mid-2000s. There was no internet with a good synopsis, at least none that would interest my high school self. Uh, so after Casey's run and grabbing a few older books, uh, I ended up going into uh, finding Whedon's run, Morrison's run, um, and of course I started collecting books pretty much from 2008, 9 all the way till the end of Uncanny X-Men, more or less. Uh, but, and, and I didn't jump into the Peter David's X Factor, I was in the New Mutants with uh, Zeb Wells, was it? Hmm. Yeah, I can't remember now. But I was into all the X books as much as I could be. And of course then I went back and I've completed a lot of um, my runs, I've read a lot of Claremont stories. Uh, actually, I've read pretty much all of it. Uh, it. It's a huge part of my life. And so what drew me to X-Men? The big thing that drew me to X-Men was that there was a bigger sense of self in it. It was, it was a superhero story, but X-Men obviously was a lot more than that. And going back and rereading all the old issues and into where we are now, uh, it wasn't always about societal norms. It wasn't always about segregation. It was usually like, the early versions, the Lee Kirby stuff, even some of the early Roy Thomas stuff. Um, really, most of the 60s output uh, was not about mutants being outcasted and being shunned for being who they are. And uh, as a child in the 90s, I was big on comic books. I was big on Star Wars. I was big on all the nerdy things you can think of later on in Pokemon. Uh, but comic books were not cool. Star Wars is not cool. Pokemon, eh, it's probably still not that cool uh, for people my age anyway. Um, so I was picked on a lot. And I found myself somewhat in the X-Men. I found that I was being considered an outcast just for enjoying media. Uh, which is silly to say now because obviously comic books are the norm. Being a nerd is cool, which is a good thing. Um, but in the 90s, it wasn't. Uh, and so this isn't a sob story. It's just the reality of what it was. And so I found I was really drawn to X-Men because there was this family of people who was accepting everybody for who they were. And I had internal issues that I could not express and not uh, really share with anybody, but I could share it with the X-Men. And so the X-Men really drew me to themselves because of what they had to offer. And of course, the stories were great. Um, the characters were awesome. There's always something new around the corner. Uh, it was just an incredible world that they had to offer. And of course, X-Men Evolution came out. Um, I did have the Pride of the X-Men, uh, that video, Australian Wolverine. Uh, we don't talk about that. Fräulein, you left before I could properly welcome you. Welcome her? Wait, she's not drawn in the X-Men, is she? She's just a kid! And so as I went back to start collecting all the old X-Men issues, uh, of course I came across a bunch of other fans of the X-Series, and uh, the Instagram community for just comic books in general is huge. And uh, it's kind of why I'm doing all this stuff right now, is that there's just such a big community that needs to be shared with everybody else. And... Uh, X-Men is a big thing in my life. Um, it has been with me for many, many years. Uh, and I've always had this desire to not just collect all the issues, uh, because I want to have all those stories to myself, but also to share the stories and share the awesome artwork and the share the, the joy that X-Men has brought me with everybody else. Don't call me darling. So that's it for the video here. If you had any questions or comments, any other suggestions I could do, just leave them in the comments below. We'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.